So I got a couple of the boys in close and I just dropped to a little hip flexor stretch and just dropped it out the bottom. But you know when you think, you know, we've all been there when you think it's just going to be a quick, quick little dribble. And then like two minutes later, you're still going. I was like, you know, Austin Powers. And like, process gone. I was like, ah. Hello and welcome to Rugby Pass Offload at me, Christina Mahan. And today I'm joined by Ryan Wilson and our new co-host, Jack Knoll. And later on in the show, we will also be joined by England and now Leicester Tiger player, Freddie Burns. How are you both getting on? All good. Thank you very much. I'm all good. I'm getting there. Getting there. Jack, Jackie boy, we're going to have to establish nicknames. Is it Noli, Jack, Jackie? Oh, yeah. Jack the Tevez. Tevez. Tevez? Yeah, it's my middle name. Tevez, oh, that's are. a cool name. <laughs> you could just make, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm guessing... <laughs> Self-proclaimed, yeah. but I, I'll take. I've, I've tried to make it stick. A couple of boys call me Tevez. Um, they are, mate. Okay, well, we'll try and make Kika it stick. At the club. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I like it. Maybe I'll see so, it. I don't know. What did some people call you? Kika. K- Kiko. Why Kiko? Um, we had a couple of Argentinians. Uh, Gonzo yeah. Camacho. Um, oh, I was, was going to say one of them's up here yeah. now. Pareto, Kika Pareto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, apparently, there's an actor in Argentina uh, called Kiko. And I was in shock. I was injured a little bit when I was younger. Uh, and I had a log stint out with my knee. And I came back a lot heavier than when I left. A bit chubbier. Um, and apparently I looked like an actor called Kiko. Um, and unfortunately, a few of the boys have made it stick. So, Right. So a, basically, if, if you're fat, good, if you're yeah. fat, you get called Kiko. That's why he gets called it. He's a prop. Bless him. Well, He's a good go, man, man. Yeah. Enrico Pareto. He's a good boy. Oh, dear. Well, it's nice that we all got the memo and we all wore white today, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, Ryan, talk to me. You guys got the W against Leinster over the weekend. Congratulations. We did, yeah. Oh, um, by the way, Kika, Tevez, if you didn't know, Christina is a huge Leinster Norse. So oh, there you go. The fact, <laughs> the fact that the, we, we didn't only just batter them, but we like physically battered them as well. She'll be gutted. You all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I was just wondering how good did it feel to finally get a victory over a side so great. <laughs> <laughs> did you um? Did you watch the game? I got the second half. Yeah, I actually got oh. you when you were you like were you watching SmackDown pregame or something or like talk me through what happened with you and Andrew Porter. I was just um, I was looking after my mate. So he had Tommy Gordon on the floor, so I I just threw in the old rear naked choke, rolled him out, and uh, held onto him for a bit too long. Well, you have to once you, because once you're on the bottom, you'll know this, Jack. If you, if you're on the bottom, if you let go, then they're on top of you and they're gonna they're gonna get one over you. So yeah. I just thought, just stay in it, just stay in it, and I just yeah held it for slightly too long and end up getting the yellow card. But then you got man of the match at the same time, so you know. Yeah, I know. I'm not I'm not sure how that happened actually. I think it was more like man of the match for for that. It was probably for that. It's probably for the uh, my slick moves, my UFC moves, but. Yeah, I know that was a weird one. Eh? I was quite surprised about that, but it was, hey, I'll um, take it. It was a funny game. Like, did you go? Did you guys go back and watch? Like, did you go, watch the replay so far this weekend? How many scraps were there? Because, like, in the second half, I lost count. Like, was it just like that the there first was, half as well? There was a lot. Um, it, it's usually that's usually monster. It's like that against, but yeah, the Leinster boys were giving it some as well. So Adam Hastings uh, was giving it back as well. That was quite funny. He wound them up like you wouldn't yeah. believe. Um, we had all the boys as well you know at the moment with no fans in the stadium well you guys have got fans back we used to yeah. have in Scotland but we had all the boys in the in the stands as well like the non the, well, the 24th man uh, probably about 20 of them <laughs> and uh, those boys were making some noise it was hilarious so they were winding them up as well they, they lost they lost their heads oh they um, did because it was um, I could see Adam kept having a go at um, was it Rory O'Loughlin and he's usually quite oh, quiet <laughs> All of them lost their heads. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was it's when you know you've done the job. So now nah, it was good, good fun. I actually completely yeah. lost track of all competitions. What's going on at the moment? So you boys yeah. are you got you've said you've got a semi final and hopefully a final coming up. Yeah, we've got. Uh, it's a weird one because we play Sale this weekend. Um, we're second at the moment. Bristol are first, and I think Bristol are ahead of us by three points. But we're playing Sale on Saturday. So basically, if they get five points and we get nothing. Uh, they'll go to second and we'll go to third. So then we'll play sale next week anyway in the semis. Because then second second will play third. So it's, it's an interesting one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then obviously if Bristol lose and then we win, uh, Bristol have got Irish, uh, we'll go first, but then we'll play fourth, uh, which which is Quinns. So um, it's interesting to know what sale will do, to be honest, what sort of team they'll put out because 
obviously if they beat us by five, five, five points and we get no points, then we'll be playing sail away next week in a in a in away semis. But you know, hi, you know, historically, um, we don't normally win away semis. Um, normally, the team that has the home semis always go through. I think the last team that did it was Saris about four or five years ago. Um, when they were so, cheating. <laughs> They won it a couple of times since. So uh, um, basically, you want basically you want that home semi to be honest. So that's what we pretty much got to get one point this weekend. Okay. Good stuff. I always find yeah this end of the year it always gets really confusing because you're talking about points difference and this that and the other and I'm just like oh. Well, what's yeah. even more confusing is when you you look at the game at half time and what was it like thirty odd nil down at half time? Was that <laughs> stupid? Mate, I don't know what was happening last week. I was about to walk. <laughs> I was about to walk out and not watch it. I didn't honestly. I was clueless. But, um, what was no, the score I, at half time? I think it was like was it eighteen nil? Yeah. Well, I thought it was more than that. But yeah, it looked yeah. like you boys were going to get a hammering. Well, and they're all over us. To be fair, um, they should have probably been more. We had, well, we had no like real lookings to score or anything. Um, then I don't know. Rob, I think gave him a bit of a bollock in, at half time, and I think the forwards uh, got a bit of a ride in as well. And yeah, to be fair to them, they came out in the second half and. And I, I kind of knew they were going to come back, but I didn't know if they were going to win. But uh, Northampton were class, to be fair to them, and we were just soft. Yeah, you guys did put in a decent performance now to nudge Northampton um, at the weekend. I think it was, what was the final score? 29-26? That was really tight. Um, yeah, so uh, Joe Simmons got three points at the end, yeah. Now, obviously, it was an amazing game, but the main talking points, um, unfortunately, were around the injuries to Sam Simmons and Dan Bigger. So, Jack, can you tell us how Sam and Dan are doing? Can you give us a bit of an injury update? Uh, obviously, Dan, I'm not too sure about, um, but oh, Simo, uh, he was in today. Oh, he was in yesterday, he's in today. Um, I think he's just rolled his ankle a little bit. I don't think it's anything too too bad. Um, I think he wants to give this weekend a crack, which is obviously a, a good sign that it's, it's, it's not too bad. But um, I'm sure he'll have a few uh, fitness tests towards the end of the week and stuff to see if he can play. But I think, you know, which is awesome of our club, as boys know, they've got something massive coming on at the end of the season. Um, but they know how important these last you know, three games hopefully are for us. So um, no, I'm I think he's desperate to get back and play for us, which is which is pretty cool. So yeah, I don't think he's too bad, which is obviously very positive for his, his Lions tour as well. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's it's it is it's because of the tour. Anytime you hear one of the players selected, you know, pick up an injury, you're just if, to me, I'm just like wrap them up in in bubble wrap. But obviously, you can't do that, like you just said. Like it's you know business end of the season for you guys. Oh dear, no, no. It's a hard one because if you. Obviously, ours is kind of in that situation, you know, four years ago, and uh, that was the first time we won it. Um, and if you don't go 100%, you know, training is different, but matches, if you go in half-hearted, you probably are going to get injured. Um, you start pulling out of tackles or you don't do what you normally do, you do something different. That's when you can pick up injuries. But like, for me, I just kind of put it to the back of my head. You just got to kind of get on with it. And I'm obviously so happy I did. It was the first premiership that we won. Um, I came out injury-free as well. Um, so I think, yeah, I think the boys are, are having the same approach at the moment. Yeah, it must be bloody tough. Like I've already said that to Ali Price and that. Like boys that are getting their first crack on a Lions tour. I don't know. I don't know where my head would be at. Um, to be fair, he was rested at the weekend. Um, I think our coaches are thinking it was a slim chance of us getting to a final because we depend on other people's results. So we're pretty lucky. We've got a good bunch of nines. So they just rested him this week. And the same as Xander Ferguson. Because you look at, Porter, he came out, he got injured, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Foot, isn't it? Toe? Yeah. Did his toe? That wasn't that wasn't in the um in the neck neck hold, I promise no, you. It was when, not. <laughs> when I, in fairness, when I saw that he was injured, I was like, hang on, I was ready to give <laughs> no. you some stick, but um no, it was a toe injury. So oh, grab. You you got away with this. You got away with this. Oh, um well someone who oh, didn't no. get away with um a dirt a piece of dirty play was Ribbons, who got a red card for Northampton for a shoulder to Luke Cowan-Dickey's head. Jack, I know the last time you came on here, you thought that red cards were being given out way too easily. But what did you both make of that red card? Uh, I think they've, I think it's died down a little bit, to be honest. I think the last time I was on, it was just after the the Ollie Fawley red card, wasn't it? Did you, did you see that one, Ryan? Mate, there's been so many. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, it was, long story short, box kick, he's chased it. Fullbacks caught it. Um, Ollie Thorley's ran in chest to chest, and the heads have collided. Um, and he was yeah. red but banned for six weeks. And it was like, oh, wow. Head to head, I, yeah, head to head. I don't think that's a record. Yeah, um, it's a tough one because obviously the ribbons were on at the weekend. 
But don't get me wrong, I'm not a complete idiot. I understand why they're doing it. They are trying to protect the boys that are playing. Um, and they are trying to lower that 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 head height of of uh, that, that sorry, that tackle height. So you do obviously take away the risk of it. But again, like I said last time, I think this one was a red, by the way, because it was it was high. He didn't really dip. Um Cal Nicky, you could say was slightly falling, but it was a direct shoulder to the to the head. Um but it's that split second, isn't it? That's all you've got to decide between whether you tackle here or whether you tackle here. Um, and when you're in a game, sometimes you're thinking about so many other things and he can change at the last minute as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe if he dropped his height a little bit and he did go for that normal that normal side that, um, height tackle, it would be all right. Um, but I think maybe on this one, not just saying it because it's my own team, but um, if it was one of our boys did it as well, I'd probably yeah, say it was a red. Speaking of other controversies, did you see what happened in the Bristol Leicester game now at the end? Yeah, I didn't watch the game, but I caught what happened towards the end. Like, can we just, okay, can we just chat about it? Because it just blew my mind that this could actually happen. So what, like it was a tactical substitution um, and then he was brought back, or what, he was injured, but then he wasn't injured and then he was okay to play. And then, oh. I don't know. See, I don't know if Pat Lamb was, well, obviously he's in the heat at the moment. He wants to win the game and you can't blame him for that. Do you know what I mean? He's competitive. But I just don't know if he thought at that moment he was doing the best thing to try and win that game. So basically, if he couldn't come back on uh, because they originally said he was injured, which meant he couldn't come back on, it would have been an uncontested scrum, which meant they would have had to lose another player, um, which would have been Leicester's ball on the five-metre line. But he was trying to say that to the to the ref. But then the, t- but the team manager then was saying, no, it's not an injury. It's only a tactical, so he can go back on, so he can scrummage against them, try and win the ball, and then kick it out. Uh, but I don't think Pat Lamb was realising that at the, at the, at the start nah, of it. So He wasn't. Yeah. He, he got it wrong, didn't he? He yeah. got it wrong because he said, oh, I never take Johnny off. Oh, I never take Johnny yeah. off like that. He must have been injured. And then he's like, no, no, tactical. Oh, yeah, it was mate, what, about, what about Borthwick? He was losing it, eh? Brilliant. Like, oh, no, I love that. Like, Borthwick, so... He's so competitive and he's so like in the zone. Like I knew he would be like that. Like because he, at the end of the day, he knew what he was saying and he knew. I reckon he knew what was happening that side. He yeah. knew what Bristol were trying to do. Um, and then yeah, to see that unfolding, not really being able to do anything about it, was obviously a bit frustrating. And then obviously there was a bit of controversy with the scrum as well, whether uh, the scrum have got out the side, and then there was all that stuff after as well. It was it was exciting to watch, but if you're a Leicester, especially if you're a Borthwick, if you target that game. Um, you'd be gutted. Oh, it was absolutely mental. Um, yeah, some entertaining rugby over the weekend for sure. Hold on, let's just start again and say so. Hoggy was going to come on, and then we just played him anyway. <laughs> Could have got Hoggy on if it was three weeks ago. I reckon he would have come on because you know he was in his jokey stage. I think he he had a, a bad game. Um, I can't even remember who it was against. But he had a bad game. He was on the bench the week after. Oh, okay, um, he's on his head of it. It was in his head, but then obviously that week he was on the bench. He was like, right, that's it. I'm switching on. I'm doing it. He's had his socks pulled up. So he started wearing his socks down. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, fair play, Hoggy. Like, yeah, that's right. He was, he was fake telling his legs, mate. This, oh this season? My God. This extra has got to him. This extra weight. Well, we don't fake tan. He was wearing tinted moisturiser if he wanted to fit. Well, I saw it, I reckon. And oh, because bless him, he doesn't tan, the poor bloke. He doesn't tan, he <laughs> hates it. Like All of us guys down here, you know what I mean? One day, and a couple hours in the sun, yeah. um, we start frying a little bit. Whereas he, obviously, we call him squishy at the moment. You know those little sweets? Yeah. He's got oh. the, the white, white top of the sweet. White top. He's got the pink, the pink neck. <laughs> so he looks like a squishy. Um, <laughs> anyway, but he was, he was tinted moisturising, socks down. He was wearing his pink or white boots or whatever. Um, trying to buy into the, the way we are a little bit, a bit different. That happened, put on the bench. Uh, he came in the week after, socks pulled up, black boots. I was like, that's it, I'm focusing, head down. Uh, came on against, it was our home game last week, who was it? Um, who did we pump last? Oh, Newcastle. Came on against Newcastle, carved up, and now that's it. Now training, socks up, black boots. Um, he's back he's to being weird. again. He's so. really weird with stuff like that. He's so OCD. Have you been in his bedroom on away trips? I've no, I've I've, I've, been, oh, his house, I've seen mate. his house. You know what boys are like? World Cup, like I would literally get my bag, launch it in the cupboard, like empty it out. Me and Barks actually had a running joke of how messy we could make our room. It was <laughs> like that we'd see who could make their side of the room messier. 
Whereas you get in a hoggy's room, you're like, boys, please, can you just please not come in? And we'd be like, mate, we're just coming in for coffee. And he'd have his, like, his toothbrush lined up with his toothpaste next to it. Like everything lined up and neatly with his pants and socks all in the drawers. Who unpacks their pants and socks when you go away? <laughs> like on holiday, you leave it in the suitcase, don't you? <laughs> no, most people use the space that's there. <laughs> nah, no? most men leave it in a suitcase. Oh, he unpacks. God. I reckon like on a on one night away, when you go like on an overnight trip somewhere, he'd unpack all his kit into the wardrobe, hang stuff up. Yeah, he's 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 got a problem. Has anyone ever that, like messed up his stuff before? Yeah, yeah. He does that at the club. He does it with his training stuff. So he's comes in in the morning, puts his bag down, he's got his coffee cup, his watch on the bench with his phone. And then he'll have all his clean clothes when he gets changed after all folded up. And then each set of kit, tra- uh, gym kit and then training kit are all folded. I think boys have started catching on to it now. And you come in sometimes and his bag's upside down or his clothes are all folded up and messed up. So, I, I, yeah, boys have caught up to it. And I don't think they, uh, I don't think he likes it too much. But he's playing it pretty cool at the moment. Okay, it serves you right for not coming on here, mate, if you ever hear this. Yeah, I did see his hair, to be fair to him, the, the new barnet, the new colour is a hell of a lot better than the old ginger one. Yeah, I've got time yeah. for it. I've got, I've got a lot of time for that. I like it. Yeah, the new one, the, the the Auburn, what was the last one? He said it was his more sensible haircut. Is this when he was going through the phase of socks up, black boots, Auburn hair? No, the, what, he was going through through the socks down, uh, pink boots on, and he had the long ginger what? fringe that like, came down <laughs> to here. He dyed it that colour though. He, he yeah, I know, that's it, what I mean. He's trying to make it darker. Um, that just sounds like does that not sound like a a dye disaster and then he just kind of owned it like that wasn't the intentional colour like no I think he was telling boys that he wanted to look more sensible and now he's gone his hair looks better now to be fair yeah it does there's a lot of um, there's a lot of blondies on the the Glasgow squad isn't there they've all dyed their hair peroxide blonde yeah they've all gone for it I know Uh, it's all a fad they've all been there they've all been there You've had some haircuts, mate. What you got at the moment? Mm. Um, I've got like a grown mohawk at the moment. I need to get it cut again. Oh, nice. Would you ever do a mohawk, Ryan? You could, you'd suit a mohawk. Oh, I'm going to do something weird with this when I'm done. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually get like a fringe, like a woman's haircut. <laughs> like for a laugh, on like for a social. I'm going to cut a proper fringe in and like box it out and have it like a bob. Just like an old Gallagher. <laughs> Get an old Gallagher. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And try and keep it for a week. So I'll wait. I'm not going to cut it off for a while, I don't think. Oh, dear. I can't wait oh, to see dear. that. So, Jack, it seems like your club and Lions teammate, Alex Cuthbert, is heading back to Wales. So do you know where he's heading and why he's made the decision to leave? Uh, I'm not too sure where he's heading. He's kept his... Uh, his uh, it's quite close to his chest, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there was obviously rumours of him going back to Wales. I think, you know, if I'm honest, he's a bit like me over the last couple of years. Um, what I said to him today, actually, is, is we're two wingers and we've both played about five games between us this year. So uh, he can't keep both of us. <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit of a stinker. But um, I think for him, he obviously needs a lot of looking after during the week and stuff. And I think he'll get that at, uh, back home. Um, but he's he's a class player. Like, you just see the way he's play- He's been out pretty much a whole year. And the way he's played over the last couple of weeks has been... It's been awesome. So um, I think we actually rested in this week to obviously go into the big three games at the end. Um, but I think I know he's got big hopes to get back into the Wales squad as well, um, which is which is class. You know, to see a guy that you know is coming towards the end of his career as well, but still wants to you know push on and play international. And that he's definitely one of the best wingers I've played with as well. He's so he's ridiculously fast when he doesn't even try. Um, he's obviously pretty big. He's strong. Um, so he's got it all. So hopefully he can just stay fit. Um, and I think he'll do yeah, a bit of damage next year. Now, we did touch off it earlier, but Carl Sinclair did get the call up over the weekend to replace Andrew Porter in the Lions. It was of no fault of Ryan's. But um, Jack, do, does his call up um, almost give you hope that you could potentially be on Warren's list if any of the back three do get injured? Like, where's I your head so. at? Yeah, I, I obviously hope so. Um, having a taste of one tour, uh, it was obviously class. Um, it's definitely something I want to do again, but I don't know. Like I'm in, I've played one game all year, like one full game all year. So uh, as much as I, I'm desperate to go and I hope to go, and all I can do is try and play well when I'm when I'm playing, and I've got a bit of credit in the bank. I hope, but you know, I can't be too disappointed if he picks someone else. Um, obviously, you, you don't wish anyone to get injured. Um, so that's base, best case scenario. But you know, at the end of the day, if I hopefully you know do get the nod, if something does happen, um, I'm going to try and be, be in a position to. To be there and be ready but at the same time like ryan said before like i 
very much looking forward to hopefully a couple of games for England um, and then a good off-season because, you know, I don't know what my body's, my body's like at the moment. I think maybe a good four or five weeks um, off. Like, boys will get that after Lions tours, but then you'll obviously miss a lot of the season coming into the you know, next year. So, you know, I'm, I am looking forward to a good, a good block off as well when I get to go home and spend time with my family and stuff and not have an operation, touch wood, hopefully. So, um, oh, yeah, obviously... Yeah, if I if I get the nod, obviously I'll be buzzing, and you know, like I said, as long as I'm back on the field and I'm playing well, um, that's all I can really do, to be honest. What's that? Hello. Oh, Hello. the man that's the man that's in self isolation. Why did we not think of it? Why did we not hey. think of him sooner? Hey, you can't oh, get rid boy. of me. You can't get rid of me. What's happening? Where the hell in the world are you at the moment? I'm back in Bath now, mate. Yeah, I'm. I'm. In... Oh yeah, it, it, looks, looks, it, it looks a bit Japanese. We got an, we got an audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the red. <laughs> Stay two meters away. Follow your Instagram, mate. I mean, oh, follow right, your Instagram, off. and you've been yeah, everywhere. Oh my god, you've been living it up, Freddie. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's, FOMO. that's the beauty of of playing in Japan. Is you played? I played nine games, and then I've had like three months off. So, um, it's been hard to come back. I tell you that. Like isolating right now is killing me. But yeah, it's been been all right. I've enjoyed myself. Oh, mate, I honestly, I've been envious. Although I, I think you've lost the plot now, mate, because I've seen some of your Instagram stuff recently. What you need you to stop doing night? those q and I've actually forgotten what you were doing last night. You got properly dressed up in a suit and tie, didn't you? Pretend you were Gareth Southgate. Oh, that, was, that was back during the World Cup, mate. So I literally <laughs> went into training at Bath in um, full England kit every time they played. And then the last, the semi-final, I went in dressed as Gareth Southgate. But yeah, honestly... <laughs> I thought that was you in self-isolation dressed up. I thought he's <laughs> properly lost it. Oh, he's got a suit on himself in his house. I, I need to like, I need to have some, I need to make up something that when you're drunk or bored, you're not allowed on Instagram because yeah. like, ah. um, it's, it's terrible. I, I just start talking about me taking pisses on the pitch. No, like, that's good, mate. I like it. It's good what for am us. I, what am I doing? When I'm chopping pints with kids, because like, I got drunk... I got drunk in Hawaii and then like, it's like four in the morning in Hawaii, but that's like five in the afternoon UK time. And I did like an Instagram live oh, and then like someone requested to talk to me. So I accepted the request oh, and it was like, no. like some 12 year old kid. And I just started, I was like, mate, do you want me to chop this pipe? And he's like, yeah, go on then. I just <laughs> <laughs> Then the agent, I get, yeah, yeah. Then I get a text being like, mate, you can't do that anymore. So it's, it's harmless fun, but. You know, there's a thing you can do on Instagram, and it's called close friends. So you can you can have your story as loose as you yeah. want for your close friends, and then your agent Pointless. will be just as happy. But that's just ad, that's just admin, like, and then people get annoyed when they're not in my close friends. But they don't know four, if they're in your close four, friends or not. Four in the morning, ten points deep. You ain't thinking of that. <laughs> nah, nah, exactly, exactly. But that's how I think long were you in Hawaii for, mate? So let, so basically, I was meant to do two. I was meant to do two weeks. And then with about four days left, I was on the smash in Hawaii with these friends that I made. And they're like, oh, I should just stay. So I just cancelled my flight and I rebooked it for the 3rd of June, thinking that that was another like week or so. Didn't realise it was another three and a half weeks. <laughs> so then I, had to find, then I had to find a hotel for three weeks. Like, honestly, it cost me a fortune, but I was like... But I'm when are you going to be now. in Hawaii again? Like it was well worth it. No, exactly. And I was like, you also know, as you boys know, that playing in, the, in like the UK... You're in the trenches for like 11 months. So I was like, I'm just going to make the most of this time and just have a good crack. And then, you know, from now on, I'm going to be in England till what, June next year, probably. So why not? Too right, mate. Too right. So you spent all your yen? All the yen's gone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you were thankful did, for isolation oh, then. No. Did, you, did, you, did you genuinely fly out like by yourself? Did you have any plans to meet anyone or you just went and met? Jack, have you never gone on holidays by yourself before? No. It is the one of the best things you can do is just go and travel alone for, for a while. I didn't think that was a thing. Yeah, it's no, a thing. It's, it, I was nervous, but it's, it was um, unbelievable. I, I got to admit, I did drop a Tinder pin. Now I downloaded Tinder and dropped the Tinder pin <laughs> again, just so, just so I had like just so I wasn't uh, completely on my own. Um, yeah. But then I actually met this girl on on the first night. I met this girl called Kelsey on the first night, and we met up. And genuinely, hand on heart, there was just no like there was nothing like sexually there at all. And we just became great friends. And then she was like, oh, do you mind if I bring a few friends to like this party? And I'm like, sweet. She just bought about six gay blokes. So I just literally infiltrated the Honolulu gay scene, mate, and just partied with, with them. So it was 
pretty easy. Um, um, now, Freddie, I do have to ask you a question, which I think you guys were chatting about when I was just looking over um, what our producer had sent us. But can you talk to me about the story about you peeing on the pitch? Oh, well, basically, uh, it was basically, it was hammering down with rain. It was a real, st- I'm, I'm not saying where I did it or what, but it was a real stop-start game. And I went out for the second half and I was just absolutely busted. Like, and I mean to the point, and the game wasn't, you know, normally you, you obviously get a bit nervous and stuff. And like, but the adrenaline takes over and you haven't got time to think about it. This game was honestly the worst game of rugby I've played in. It was like every five minutes, every five seconds there was a scrum. And anyway, one of the boys goes down injured and I was like, oh, lads, I, I really need a slash. So I got a couple of the boys in close and I just dropped to a little hip flexor stretch and just dropped it out the bottom. But you know, when you think, you know, we've all been there when you think it's just going to be a quick, quick little dribble. And then like two <laughs> minutes later, you're still going. I was like, you know, Austin Powers. <laughs> and like, process gone. I was like, ah. Oh, oh, dear. oh my God. That is amazing. It helped me it was raining, to be fair. It helped me it was raining, but still, I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah when you're that wet. I've heard a boy's pee in this house. I've never heard of someone you... dropping, it, dropping it out. <laughs> Yeah, this I, is well, the I, first I've heard of any of this. So, wow, my eyes have been opened. Yeah, and boys, the boys sometimes said, surely pee themselves. Yeah, yeah, like Freddie said, then when it's peeing down with rain and you're yeah. you're soaking anyway, you're hydrated. So, it's probably not going to be, you know, yellow, yellow. Um, I've known boys that have peed themselves. Warm me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you're in your wetsuit, mate. Exactly. You warm yourself up. <laughs> but even dropping like your your wet socks suit. as well. Look at Christina's <laughs> face. She's like, you disgusting. <laughs> It's, it's like when you're in your wetsuit or at Ocean Beach. You ain't getting out for a week, are you? <laughs> oh my good gracious! Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah, bye. <laughs> um, no, what talk what about you what about you saying? Oh, should I tell this? Am I? I'm like just telling this as a normal story. Or is this game the podcast? As if you just come on for a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I'm just terrible. I just I get real. I get the I get. Was it the fear after any podcast? It's like a night after drinking. I'm just like, what if I said? Yeah. Oh, my. that's well, very you though I feel like that's part of your charm you just say what is on your mind um, and you're, you don't hold back which I think we always appreciate uh, now talk to me you did mention just there when you got to Hawaii first night you downloaded Tinder is it true that the English accent did it work a charm over there oh, I'd, I'll be honest with you I'd, actually this is going to sound real bad but you don't really need like I literally did it to me so I met this girl like I said and we just um, end up striking off as, as friends genuinely um but yeah, literally, you'd you'd order you'd order food. I remember I was at a poke bar. You know, is it poke? Is that you said? It's like yeah, poke. So yeah, I just yeah, ordered yeah, raw fish. Yeah, so I just ordered my my food, and then you had to like wait at the end. And when I was waiting, this girl was just like, oh "My God, are you from England or whatever?" And I'm like, "Like you just, but you end up speaking like a like a like a knob." To be honest. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah. What do you mean? You end up speaking like a knob? Like one minute I was like, one minute I'm like, one minute I'm in Bridgerton. And so, like, you know, the waitress is, if, if the waitress is hot, I'm like, oh, like, thank you very much, dear woman. Like this. And you're like, Johnny. And then I have a couple of beers and then I turn all cockney. And I'm like, all right, mate, all right, geese. What's that for this? Yeah. So you, you just end up talking, like, as English as you can to try and get attention. It's terrible. I obviously get it a lot with people who go, are you Scottish? People obviously, yeah, yeah, Scottish, yeah. Mate, people say I'm Australian. Oh, Aussie all the time. People in Glasgow think I'm an Aussie all the time. I think it's because I just rock around in flip flops in the piss and rain all the time, though. But oh, I think man. Australian must be a common one for this side because when I was in the last time I was in America, I was stopped and asked if I was Australian, and I said, "What? No, couldn't be no. further from the truth." Um, thanks, guys, for all just shaking your heads. I am blonde and tan, so I would have taken that as a compliment. You should have agreed, but no, <laughs> fine. Go. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah. nah, nah. Definitely not good looking enough to be an Australian. Thanks. No, but Jack, we did mention this to you earlier. And Freddie, I do want you to think on this as well because I'm going to ask you it in a second. But Jack, yeah, Freddie, we've got it. You, yeah, Jack, no, 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 you got away with it the last time you were on. But I want your initiation story for when you've got your first cap in England. Freddie, you were about, don't mute your mic. Oh, I thought, <laughs> thought you're going to be like, oh, I can't speak. <laughs> okay, so Freddie, you, you did it as well. I'm sure you did. Um, so I, know, I think it's a real old tradition, but basically, you have to have a drink with uh, every single player that you've played with that day. Um, and it's their choice. So they bring up a drink and then you sit there and you drink it. So um, it could be anything, beer, vodka, cider, water, milk, 
um, whatever. It's, but it's basically buyer's choice. Um, but they've got to do it with you. Uh, my first cap was in the Six Nations. We didn't drink after the first game in France, but we waited till the end. So we're in Italy. Um, real posh cathedral. Um, it was very nice. But the only drinks to hand were white wine, red wine, um, and, and beer. Um, and that was it. So uh, first couple went okay. Um, in the end, I was necking pints of beer, uh, pints of white wine, and pints of uh, red wine. And it's ideal for everyone else because they do one drink and then, you know, you take your turn. But boys like to stitch you up. So they'll come in and they'll plan it. So they'll come in and be like, right, I'll give them a pint of red wine and they'll come in two seconds later with a pint of beer or whatever. Um, and obviously, a few of the boys that are going to be quite kind to you, they say, right, what you should do is, you know, two or three drinks, go to the toilet, make yourself sick, um, come back, try and have a few drinks and just see how you feel. Um, but I didn't have time to do that. I think... I was necking pints of red wine non-stop for about 20 minutes. Um, I was running to the toilet then. I could literally feel it coming back up my throat. I run into the toilet um, and obviously Johnny May and Luther Burrell were capped at the same time. There was only three cubicles in there. And uh, I've ran into the toilet and Johnny May and Luther Burrell are both on their hands and knees, puking red wine, <laughs> white wine all over the toilets. Um, and I don't even, I can't even remember what I've done then, but something's happened and I think I was sick. And then I thought it was a good idea to drop to lock Johnny May in the toilet. Uh, so I've held the door. He's jumped up on the toilet, broke the toilet. Um, he's screaming in there. Freddie, you'll know what Johnny's like. He's literally yeah. screaming. <laughs> yeah. he, he is doing, making all sorts of noise in that cubicle. Like he's doing chicken noises. He's screaming. And all of us boys are holding this door, door back. And it was, it was brilliant for them. Yeah, then I've, then I've got onto the bus and I've done my song on the bus. Um, don't remember anything. We had presidents, president's wives. We had, I think we had Stuart and Stuart's partner. And, um, and we had Faz and Faz's wife. And then it was just me at the front of the bus. And I, I think my shirt was ripped off and I don't even know what happened. Sang my song, tried going to the bar. And then Stuart Lancaster told Tom Johnson, who, was, who I played with at the time, and said, look, mate, you need to take him to bed. Um, he's trying to get to the bar. And I don't think it's a good idea. Um, and that's how my night ended. And I woke up in the morning thinking, what the fuck has just happened to me? Uh, red wine all over my bed sheets. So, yeah, it was a good time, but one one that I, I forgot pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, God. How was your head the next... How long did uh, the hangover last? I think I was I was still... I, I think I had a good 12 hours sleep and I was still sorted. I woke up in the morning and... You know, when you walk down in the morning, like Freddie said earlier about that beer fear, I woke up in the morning... And I just had like all the boys looking, like all look at the same time as I walked in for breakfast, just laughing. I'm thinking, ah, oh, just that. And I don't remember anything. This is what I've got, I've got told. Um, the straight away I've come in, pretty sheepish, like, oh, lads, was I okay last night? Was I behaved? Like, what happened? Um, and anyway, you just hear different things coming in from different angles. Like, oh, you did this, and then you shouted this, and then you tried doing this. And I'm just thinking, just kill me now like, uh, what's going on that's when you've got to be smart that's when you walk into the room and go oh, you were out of order last night what about you last night oh my god what about you last night Spin that's around. what they were all saying to me and I was like it's too uh, late then I was just and I was only really? I, was, I was 19, 20 at the time so I was just like, uh, yeah. what do they say about being blackout drunk it's like your brain is protecting you from what you did the night before uh, and it's just best to try not to try not remember it oh. it was deny it was, deny it was, deny, yeah. deny re-accuse did you have to do that, Freddie? Yeah, so I had the same as you. Um, obviously, mine was at the end of the autumn where we obviously beat, beat the All Blacks. So everyone's absolutely buzzing. Um, so same as you. I met the dinner in that, whatever that room's called at Twickenham. I haven't been there many times. I only went there once, I think. Um, <laughs> but we're there. And everyone's sort of like feeding me drinks. And I didn't realise that they were actually, like, I'm sat down and I'm absolutely, like, hammered. Like, I can, I'd, like, the chicken on my plate, I could swear it was still moving. <laughs> like, it looked like Johnny May. Have you seen the picture, by the way, just off topic? Have you seen the picture of Johnny May when he got caged as a chicken? When we caged him. Yeah. We got him in the dog. We got him in the dog. We got him in the dog. He was walking around the house naked, clucking. And we got him in the dog kennel and locked it. And he's in there clucking like a chicken naked. That's that's, that's another is story. That, hold on. Is that, is that where, where the it came from? from? So he, so is he a chicken? There was a few there was a few injuries in the Gloucester squad when we were younger and he claimed that he'd been possessed because in the same house. So I think it was him, Sean Knight, Henry Trinder, I think so, off, off the top of my head. Um, and they claimed that they'd been possessed by a demon that was making them be injured and the demon was a chicken. 
I told this the other day on here, and someone was like, what are you talking about? I was like, it's something to do with a chicken and Johnny May. Mate, so, but he used to, like, we'd be in team meetings, and, like, head coach would be talking, and Johnny would just... Yeah, <laughs> just start chicken noises. Start, he still does that now. <laughs> just start clucking, mate. But anyway, yeah, so... <sighs> Um, so I had my, I had my food and I'm, I'm absolutely hammered. And next night I hear over the, they start doing the speeches and I hear the president turn around and go, and obviously we have a, a first cap today. So, um, Freddie Burns, if you'd like to come up and collect your cap. And I've tried to stand up and literally oh, no. I can hardly walk. Right. And obviously this is the all black full of, and I'm swear I'm, I'm trying to pass through the tables to get up to the stage and I'm just elbowing McCaw in the back of the head, sort of stumbling over Dan Carter. Do you know what I mean? Like all these legends. I'm, and he just gives me my cap and I can't see. So I shake his hand, have a picture, go back. Halfway back, Dan Carter, to be fair, stops me and has, congratulates me. Have a good conversation. And there's a picture. It's actually of my story last night where literally I, I don't know what I'm saying, but I am, I am, I'm probably telling him how to play the game. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I am hammered drunk. And then um, got on the bus, sang my song, went back to Penny Hill Park. And all I remember is waking up, um, on the heated floor of the bathroom at Penny Hill Park with just a little pile of sick just cooking next to me because obviously I've been sick and the, the heated floor had just warmed it up nicely. Um, and then we went to the team meeting and like you, I had the fear. And all I remember is Ashy coming sat next to me, Chris Ashton sat next to me. And he went, he went, you, are you all right after last night? I'm like, yeah, I went, why? He went, oh, I think we just started punching each other. And I was like, <laughs> apparently, like, literally, I have no, this is, this is, that, this is all I, after that, I was like, nah, mate, we're all good. I don't really know what happened. And then literally, apparently, we just started, we're at the bar and we just started sort of jabbing each other or something. But it was, oh yeah, it's God. it's messy. But hey, that's that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Yeah. Good when you're on the other side of it, mind. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't there, Nosey, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you quickly forget about... I was waiting for a but no. <laughs> you do quickly forget about, like, what it feels like to that, at that time. And, like, all you want, all you want is just a pint of water, like... You know, one of your yeah. mates come up to you and be like, oh, I let it. I know you, it's rough time. Pint of water, mate. Sort yourself out. Bread roll, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's opposite. When it's your turn, it's like, fuck this. This guy was going to do it to me, so I'm going to do it to him back. Here's a pint of vodka. Take that. Mate, I've, um, I've had a few nightmares of that. I played, uh, played Argentina 2013. And after the first test, we managed to persuade Stuart Lancaster to let us go out. And uh, he was like, right, we'll all go out together. We went to this karaoke bar. And bear in mind, nothing starts in Argentina till like the uh, li- like midnight at least. But we're in this karaoke bar, we've had a few beers, and uh, Ben Foden's got up, sang Enrique Iglesias, hero. Like the few girls that were there, absolutely loving it. Do you know what I mean? And then uh, he calls me up to sing, and as I'm going up, Rich Wigglesworth is like, "Ah, oh, uh, I dare you to call up Lanny when you finish your song." So I get up and I sang whatever song I sang. I can't remember, and I just start going Lanny. Like me, like this, for the whole team, right? So, like, obviously, everyone knows what Stuart Lancaster is like, pretty straight laced. So, when it reluctantly he gets up, and the best thing ever is he sang Don, Don McLean American Pie, right? But I don't think he realized this is the version with the four minute instrumental in it. So, like, halfway through the song, <laughs> he just stood there for four minutes, like this, just like <laughs> not knowing what to do. Yeah, I didn't play for England again after that. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but... <laughs> so terrible. But what the drink does to us, eh? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Oh, look, well, Freddie, as a man who is finally just back from Japan and Hawaii, talk to us about the experience of Japan. You know, it seems that you had to put up with some very weird incidents on and off the pitch. So, can you talk to us about maybe what were the weirdest things you encountered over there? Um, weirdest thing. Well, everything's pretty weird when they're trying to when when you go to a restaurant and they offer you chicken sashimi. You know, you're in a weird place. Um, yeah. same with they have like horse sashimi and that there was there was lots of weird stuff over there just because it's so, a culture so different to ours I think the thing that probably took me most by surprise is just how compliant the boys are like obviously even in the top league the boys work for the company and then and then train and yet they'll rock up no complaints you know you know what it's like boys when when you're doing like a bronco test or a fitness test day you're like sapping complaining trying to like get out of it make your excuses Whereas I had no excuse because the boys that I was doing it with or running it alongside, they've been stood on a factory floor for six hours doing it. Yet they just rock up, really diligent, do everything. Um, but then they take it off the off the um, off the field as well. You know, with you know, we've already I've been on before and said about the crossing the road story. Um, yeah. You know, like they just they just so strict and, and compliant. 
And it just kind of annoyed me a little bit because it transfers on the pitch where you you can't play off the cuff of them. As much as it seems like they do, they, they love structure and they love rules and all that stuff. So um, it could be frustrating at times, especially when you couldn't speak the language. But the boys I played with down at Shockey were unbelievable. And we had a, a successful season for our um, for, for, for our sort of league and, and all that. But um, yeah, we got pipped by Goody's team last game for us. So nine games, nine games in a season. My body feels fresh. The mind feels fresh. So I'm looking forward to um, getting back into the premiership and actually having, having like a good, a good crack. Cause I love, I love Japan, but there's no two ways about it. <clears throat> the competitiveness of the premiership and, and European rugby as a whole can't be, can't be top. Was it true now that the players wanted to get stitches? Oh yeah. So, so the, so basically the, the workers, they get paid like per stitch. So like if they get cut open and they need to be stitched up, they get paid for it. So when boys are getting split up, they just don't, they just don't really care. They're just, they're, they're, they're happy. They're like that. They're probably in the, trying to open it more <laughs> to get more stitches. Um, but no, they're just yeah. so bizarre. Because you're injured, injured in the workplace effectively. That's yeah, why, isn't it? yeah, exactly. Um, you know, every, everything though is, is there is, is company based. You know, if it's about not bringing the company into, um, you know, don't it's cause repute. anything. You, it's repute, yeah, yeah, because, but, but over there, yeah. if, boys do something bad like one of the lads right one of the lads got drunk and he and he ran away from the taxi right and uh he didn't pay but they called the company because they knew that he played rugby and there was generally chat that the company were going to just can't just bin the rugby team like that's that's what they do because it's not like a business for them the rugby but anyway he turned around and he said they said what happened he goes i don't know i woke up and i was running is what he said (laughs) and they believed him (laughs) Hey, how did you last two minutes over there? If that's yeah. the case, they, 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 they believed it. Well, mate, we could go out. Could yeah, go you out. were lucky. Oh, well, you were kind of lucky yeah. with that, wasn't it? Because of COVID, you couldn't, you couldn't be the full Freddy. Yeah, well, no, I could because we just then would have four hour bus journeys home and I'd get the sing alongs on the back of the bus. But there was a few videos like I'm at the back singing and the Japanese boys are just having none of it. But I got, I tried to get a few sing alongs. I got them. What did they learn by the end? I got them to learn um, Andy Williams. Uh, I love you, baby, and if it's yeah, that one, so by the end of it, they love karaoke. Eh? Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, but they don't know, they don't really know any English songs, mate. But isn't it so, with the karaoke over there? Isn't it the culture is that you're not meant to do well, like you, you're deliberately supposed to be bad so that you don't offend the other people or something? Is that not true? Yeah, probably. But I'll be honest with you, the, the karaoke bars over there is like you go into a building and there are twenty karaoke rooms. So you just, you and your mates go into this room and you just order beer and drink and it all comes. And then, so it just be, once I went in with just three other foreigners. So there's four of us in there because like nothing else was open. And there's just four of us in there eating chicken, singing songs terribly. Um, well, look, on that note, we will, we'll wrap it up. Um, I, like it's been a wild episode today. Thank you for coming on, Freddie, and filling in. Um, I don't, it always like, goes I just, to a shit show when I rock up, doesn't it? It was a shit oh, show before you started. It's always a class. <laughs> we'll have to get you back on again from the start for a proper episode um i feel like you could fill us in on many many stories okay silence right okay well um i'll wrap up she's crashed she's crashed (laughs) unless he's really still (laughs) (laughs) everyone froze then i don't know what that Oh, mate. Oh, dear. Well, look, that is it from us. Uh, thanks to Freddie Burns, Ryan Wilson, and Jack Noel. And thanks to you for listening. More offloading next week. Make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a rating and review if you can. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube as well. Thanks, guys. Noly, go and do your Zoom meeting, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm listening to it now. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you later. Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. See you later, everyone.